Hello, 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 everyone. It's me. It's Elliot. It's your favorite community manager. It's Zebulon. Here with another Learn to Build weekly stream. Going to be showing you how to build your own experiences in Sansa. So let's get that Sansa audio coming in. Hear a bit of that gentle ambience because we're going to be talking a lot about, about audio. Uh, looking at how to use audio emitters and have uh, sounds in our experiences. We're also going to be looking at lights, using those. Definitely light and shadow really, really makes an experience. And uh, we'll also be getting to bringing video streams like the Twitch stream you're watching or a YouTube video or a saved video, um, even Vimeo and stuff like that. We can pull into a Sansar experience and have there. Kind of got a little bit ahead of myself, included that last time, but I'm going to go through that more step by step this time. So then welcome, builders, young and old, new and experienced, happy to be sharing this continuing adventure with you. And uh, I just want to explain, you know, if you if you haven't uh, seen, you may, sorry, you may have seen that I go by It's Zebulon on Twitch. And uh, well, you might just like to know where that came from, because here at Sansa we have a in strong uh, team culture and part of that is having a virtual identity having a kind of like a gamer tag kind of like a nickname uh, part of the company so my one is Zebulon so I'm Elliot but I also go by Zebulon so if you see me on the internet I might be Zebulon I might be Elliot who knows cool so let's let's recap what we did last week and uh we will we will go from there into talking about lights and video and audio. So we're gonna get into some of these experiences. So we're just gonna click create, and I'm gonna give it a name. And for this one, uh, let's call it lights, camera, video. And we're going to use uh, we're going to use the base template scene. It's a pretty easy base template to to get started with. There are several other ones here, like the toy box, the Highlands, the watch party. Watch party we will be using later today, but right now I'm just going to use base template. And I'm going to click create, and it's going to appear here in my experiences. I'm just going to click the little uh, pencil and ruler, and that's going to bring me into build mode. So let's recap what we talked about last time because there was uh, quite a lot to cover in understanding the UI. So I'm going to move this window a bit more over here. And uh, let's start by talking about camera controls and recapping those. <laughs> Answer along in chat if you remember from last week. Uh, we're going to use right click on the mouse to click and drag to pivot our ca camera's viewpoint around. And then we're going to use the arrow keys or the WASD keys to move forward and back, left and right, and obviously with the right clicking and dragging I can kind of do these panning moves as well. And if I want to go faster I can hit the plus key, and I'll go faster and I can hit the minus key to make my camera move slower, which is kind of nice when you're trying to move in tight spaces, getting your point of view just right. So that's, uh, that's the camera and moving around in edit world. Obviously in Zanzar, normally you're going to be in a VR headset or in desktop mode walking around as an avatar and not <laughs> flying around like this. Cool. So let's recap the UI. Down here in the left we have my inventory and by uh, default it's going to be showing you the system options. And these are kind of like the base core things um, that everyone needs. And uh, we're going to be looking at the spotlight, the point light, and the audio emitter today. But if I want to see things I've bought on the store, I can go to purchased and it'll show me all the objects and scripts and things that I've bought. So I can take this bed and I can click and drag it into the scene. It's going to appear as a little box and when I release, it's going to show me the bed. And then I'm going to have this gizmo when I've got it selected. So blue is up and down. Green is forward and back, and then uh, red is side to side, although that depends on your point of view of the object. <laughs> and then we've got the little wheel to rotate it, flip it, any direction we want. And if we get it all messed up like this, we don't like it, that's what we can use the properties windows for. So I'm going to close this because it was open by default. 
See when I've got the bed selected, I've got properties, duplicate, delete, and lock. So if I lock it, it won't move anymore. Uh, that's what lock does, that's kind of useful. Deleting it, obviously deleting it. Duplicate will uh, make a copy of it. I can also do that with the control D key. I know, we're going to break next P, guys. I'm trying to trying to introduce everything we covered last week uh, for a whole hour in a little summary. But we're going to go back to properties, this one. And it'll bring up things like the scale. So we can also change that by grabbing these white cubes, changing the scale there. And there's some other options we'll cover in a future stream. Um, what I want to show you though was rotation. If I put all these, just I'm just tabbing between them, doing Control A to select them all, and then zero and enter. So you can see uh, if I've messed it all up, I can just open up properties, set the rotations back to zero, and it'll be good as new. Same with the scale. By default, the scale is one. Um, so you can go up to ten times bigger or one one tenth of the size. Uh, probably. <laughs> my maths maths is not my strong suit, but one is one is the size it's supposed to be. And usually, usually, um, our people will upload stuff to the store with one being relative to the size around us. So you buy a house and it's set to one. Um, you know, if you make that ten times bigger, your avatar will feel very small and the steps might be giant cliffs for you to climb instead of steps you can walk up. So, you know, usually things work the way they were intended at one, but you can definitely have a lot of fun with... Uh, changing the scale up. Cool. So, that's the inventory, properties menu, camera movement, dragging and dropping objects, moving it around, all that stuff. Wow. A lot to cover. Final thing I'll cover over here is the scene objects on the left here. So this is everything that's in the scene. So you can see we've got our little green spawn point with the feet here. And if I left click it in scene objects, it's going to select that for me instead. Uh, and if I select the bed in here, I've got that selected, which is pretty useful. So what are we going to do? Let's look at lights and how to do, uh, how to use them, how to do interesting things with them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Tools up in the left here, and I'm going to go to Scene Settings. And the reason I'm opening up Scene Settings is I don't like the way my scene looks. Um, <laughs> I don't like the, the default look we've got going on here. And part of that is uh, we have, by default, this ground fog that's causing this haziness. Um, there's lots of good reasons to have like a little bit of fog, um, but with this skybox and default fog, it looks a little bit gray and uh, like an overcast Welsh day. So we're going to go to skybox, and there's a couple of defaults in here. So we can take uh, bright clouds. You see it's a little bit lighter. What if we go, uh, there's a wasteland. That's probably going to be even brighter still. Oh, actually, that's a little bit, of, <laughs> a little bit grayer. So let's do high-rise sunset. And you can see we've got some, some bright lights here, but you can see more clearly the fog we got going on. So I'm just going to turn fog scattering, fall off, and density right the way down. And it's not <laughs> too easy to see. It obviously looks different, but with a si uh, sunrise city, Skybox does have a little bit of a fog look to it. So I'm going to go to one I've bought from the store, this Milky Way one. Actually, no, I think one Eagle Pillar. I think file names and what they were don't always link up. Uh, Eagle Pillar should be a galaxy. Oh, yes. It's that one, but I like the Milky Way one better. There we go. So now you're really seeing the how how the fog can disappear and uh, uh, fall away into nothingness. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a house, and then we're going to look at how light affects it. So, join me. Join me over here in, not on that page, that's the wrong page, in the store. I see someone in chat just asked, is there any plans to update the IE? Uh, <laughs> update the IE. Any plans to update the UI? Yes. Um, at our product meetup yesterday, we had a lot of talk about um, improvements to Eddie World and the UI that are coming up. So... Uh, hopefully in the next couple of patches, uh, we'll see quite a few changes to Edit World, which I'm very excited about. So we're going to go over here to the store, and this is just store.sansar.com. Uh, everything for avatars and objects, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a home. I'm going to look for a home or a house, 
And you see, I've got things like a script in here, a sound, not really one I wanted. So I can go all categories and I can pick a filter. And I think I'll go for architecture, seems the most likely one. And now we're getting houses, or buildings. And uh, some of them, like this, this house, is free. But I uh, don't know if you can actually walk inside that house. And uh, there are a few other good ones. The chalet is uh, pretty nice. The um, might not be listed as a home, might be listed as a house, but there's a ranch as well. But my favorite is the Hover Home by Whistler. Uh, it's 100 sounds of dollars, which is about one real dollar. And uh, I already have this in my inventory, but you can see a login to buy option here. So you click that, log into your Sansa account, and uh, purchase it. And if you don't have Sansa dollars, it'll prompt you to purchase some. So I already have this one. So I'm going to jump back in to Sansa. And I'm going to search my inventory under the purchase category for a home. And you can see we have the hover home here. So I'm going to click and drag this into my scene. And uh, my camera is kind of inside it. <laughs> there we go. And now you can see our hover home. I'm going to move this down a little bit so it's on the platform. And you can see our spawn points kind of underneath it. So let's go into... Sorry, let me clear out some of these windows for you guys. Unnecessary amounts of information. Let's select that spawn point on the scene objects list here. We can drag that up. And we can drag that back. Move my camera around. Drag it over here. Cool. And you can see there's a little arrow. Whoops. A little arrow on the front of it. So that's the facing of the avatar when it spawns. So we're going to go properties. We're going to go to the Z. We're going to go 180. And now it's completely facing the other way. We could have also done that by rotating the blue. But if you, if you remember your high school maths and angles, we know that 180 will turn it. Oh, 180. <laughs> cool. So we have this hover home. Let's build it. Let's build it and walk around it and get the perspective of an avatar um, and what it looks like inside this home. So I clicked just build in the top left here and I'm going to click visit now. And that's going to drop me into the scene. It's going to take a little bit of time to load the first time you go in, but then after that it'll be cached. <laughs> and rarely I'm wearing my bounty hunter avatar. Um, this was for a special event. A little bit, a little bit over the top. <laughs> cool. So you see we've got the bright light coming in here, casting a nice strong shadow. But then uh, we come deeper into the house and we can't see a thing. It's really, really dark. And, you know, I'm doing that terrible teaching thing again. I'm not telling you when I press buttons. F3 is swaps between first person and third person. So F3, F3. Now I'm in first person. So we're going to walk through this door here. I oh, can see got some light coming around the back of the house, shining on here. Definitely illuminates this area. But again, you know, the stairs are, you know, we can't see the stairs. We're going to trip. That's not great. So I'm going to go back into edit. And unfortunately, that's a little bit cut off on the stream. So let me just drag this over <laughs> and dra drag my camera over. Here's the side widget. <laughs> side widget has a bunch of things. Changing my avatar's appearance. Finding experiences in the Atlas, events, experience that I created, and edit scene. So I'm going to click edit scene, the little uh, pencil, and it's going to take me back into edit mode. And I'm going to move this back across because you see uh, if I don't do that, it cuts off the top left bar a little. There we go. Cool. So we're back here. Let's talk about light. Where is it coming from? So by, by default, there are two primary sources of light. Number one is the skybox itself. So we'll close this property window again. We don't need it. We're going to open up scene settings. And you can see we've got the sky brightness here is an option. So we have the, the Milky Way skybox that I bought off the store. And it has a brightness. So if I turn it up, you will see that it gets brighter and brighter. And so does everything in the scene. Here, watch that doorway. See the stairs and the doorway? Watch that as I turn it down, they will get brighter we can see more inside the house when we make it brighter, as well as see less detail as the stars get brighter and brighter. And by default, that's at zero. So we can, you know, it's space. Stars are pretty bright. Well, you know, let's put it up to one. We'll get a little bit brighter. And you can see how much of a difference that made to the, how clearly you can see the galaxy here. We don't want to completely whitewash it out by going up to like two. That's a bit much, I think. 
but the sky brightness is one thing. And let me just change that to um, Mars Day. And you see how this is a very different look. See how much more light we have in the Mars Day skybox. So skyboxes will really, really make a difference um, on how much light they're, they're emitting. And if I crank this one all the way up, <laughs> you can see that uh, this completely whitewashes everything out in a way that the uh, galaxy did not. So, but, uh, you know, this is going to be hard to see change, so I'm going to put it back to the galaxy so we can really clearly see what our lights are doing. See, look at that difference. So that's the skybox light. Let's talk about light zero. It's always going to be here in your scene objects, and if I left-click it, I select it. And you can see it selected it for me, and it's all the way up there. So if I press uh, the F key, I'll be warped to that object, and my field of view will be locked around it. So I'm right-clicking and dragging, and I'm looking around this object. So that's really great if you want to look at an object in detail, and then uh, I can just use the arrow keys. And now I'm over here, looking at this light. That's kind of a little bit odd with these three arrows. What's going on here? Let me select my search history, hit enter, clear that search. And we'll go from purchase to system. So the directional light is going to come by default in all of your, uh, any experience. And it's here in the system options, should you ever delete it. And you see if I try and click create another one, you cannot have more than one directional light in a scene. So it's kind of like the sun or the moon. It's something really, really bright. Open up to chat again. <laughs> um, so something like the sun or a moon, it's our like primary source of light after the, um, after the sky box. And if I change its rotation, look at the shadow in the, whoops, <laughs> look at the shadow. Look at how all of the shadow is consuming everything. Uh, this is kind of because of the angle I'm looking at it, so let's move a little bit above it. So yeah, you can see how I can change the angle of the shadows by moving this directional light. It's like the principal light here. So that's a pretty cool effect. Look at that. Look, it's really just kind of clipping it almost like sunset. We can see the stairs and inside really clearly, and it's casting a very, very long shadow. Um, so we can do some things moving this light around. Let's see. Uh, moving up and down seems to have a little bit less effect. Um, but also on this blue axis, changing, changing the angle of the light. So we can, you know, we're finding it difficult to see objects in our scene. We can try moving the directional light around and creating a more sunset look. So I'm going to use it to help us a little bit out here uh, with a few more shadows here. Let me do a little bit more. I'm going to fly back up here. We So I'll use the F key to zoom to it again. Oh, I turned myself upside down. <laughs> there we go. Right. So we're going to do a, a little, little bit. We're going to solve half our problems with this. Okay. We're going to make the stairs a little bit more visible and the interior. A bit more visible there. Cool. So that's the uh, that's the directional light. It's always going to be called light zero in your scene objects by default. And if we go to the properties, um, you can see we also have an intensity. So by default, it's on intensity ten. You want to see what it looks like cranked all the way up? Boom. <laughs> Ow. Um, and of course, zero. It's off. Um, that's a pretty ooh, pretty cooler light. And what we can do is we can also click this little pip here. We can change the color. So if you know the RGB values you want to put in, you can type it in there, or you can just click this. And you can see it's a ever so slightly uh, cyan. Let's make it more cyan. Now we're under the sea. <laughs> now we've got an under the sea look. Now uh, we can make it red, and now we've got a kind of pinkish look. So I want to make it a little bit uh, kind of ultraviolet. Uh, that's a little bit much, isn't it? We'll, uh, we'll turn that down a little bit more. But yeah, now it's a little bit, a uh, little bit more purple, a little bit more spacey. Purple's a space color, right? <laughs> cool. So we've looked at skyboxes under the scene settings menu, and we've looked at their brightness, and then we've gone to the scene objects menu, and we've looked at the directional light, light zero. And uh, I turned this down, so let's put this back up to ten. There we go. Let's see things a little bit more clearly. Cool. So those are the two main sources for lighting the whole scene. Once you've done that, then you can start taking a look at actually lighting an interior of a house like you would. So let's start 
by bringing in point lights and spotlights. So I'm going to put a point light here. And a point light, you can see, appears as a kind of orb. And it's going to shine light in all directions, uh, like a little sun. So by default, its intensity is very low. So I can start dragging the slider up. And you can see it kind of fills the fills the room with light rather evenly. Oops, go through a wall there. Going to slow down my camera speed. And uh, yeah, so we can crank this up pretty high, but this is a pretty uh, whitewashed look, isn't it? Right, it's very, <laughs> got a sunspot overexposing our nice uh, wood textures here, and uh, it's kind of whitewashing everything evenly, which isn't uh, particularly appealing. Uh, so we're going to turn that down a little bit, and we're going to turn the color uh, a little bit off from white. So, uh, want to know a few things about light color? I don't profess to be an expert, but I was a lighting technician for like six months, <laughs> and I have a background in video production. So I can tell you, I can't remember the exact kelvins of interior versus exterior light, but I can remember that interior light is ever so slightly uh, yellow, and exterior light is ever so slightly blue. So if we go to the yellow, and we don't want to like do this, <laughs> we don't make it a bright, bright yellow, but if we just do it sort of here. It looks a little green, so maybe we can make that a little bit orange. And that's kind of all it needs. Doesn't that look warmer and softer and more comfortable as as a light? And its, it's brightness is a little bit low, so let's just, uh, maybe not 35, let's do intensity 30. There we go. So we've got a warmer, softer light going on. Ain't that lovely. So that's a point light. That's the circular one. Down here, I'm going to show you a spotlight. And guess what? A spotlight's a spotlight. <laughs> Who would have thought? So we have here this cone. We're going to kind of rotate. And you can see by default, the light's pretty low. But we're going to kind of wedge it up here in the in the corner. And uh, oh, that cone's getting a little bit obscured. We don't want it going through the wall. There we go. We'll do something like that. And we're going to start turning up the intensity for that. And you're going to see that that fills the light in the room in a very different way. Uh, it's a little bit close to that wall, so it's kind of over overshooting that a little bit. But you can see it's um, much more directional. There's no light beyond the edge of the cone. And uh, it's, it's hitting, uh, hitting following the edges of walls kind of nicely. So that's turning up the intensity is what we're seeing here. And I can also change the range so that it goes further. So you can see uh, that very low, it's just kind of skirting the edge of the wall here. And then very high, it's going all the way to the far back corner. If I go back to the point light, you see we also have range. It just honestly seems to have less of an effect. <laughs> but over long distances, a point light can make a, a bigger difference. It's much more noticeable with the, uh, with the spotlight. So I'll tell you what, let's... Uh, Let's get rid of the rotation again here in the properties menu. And we're going to do this, kind of hang it like that. There we go. That's a little bit clearer, isn't it? And uh, let's go back to the rotation, make that minus 90 so it's nice and flat. Move it up into the ceiling. Boom. Okay. More more clearly, I feel like the, the collision with the wall is confusing a bit. You can see how this is a, more like a spotlight. Great. So we've got range, we've got intensity. And then we can also change the angle, so I can make it wider, or I can make it very, very thin. So, kind of good if you want to have a more more conventional thinking spotlight, if you have a reason for that. And uh, let me bring this up a little bit more, so it's a bit more visible. We also have angular falloff and near clip as sliders. So you can see how that this one makes it much uh, narrower, but also softer at the edges, and this one makes it very crisp if you turn it all the way down, almost like a, a laser point. And then there's also near clip, which is uh, a little bit hard to see in this instance. Uh, let's crank the angle up of that again. And we'll kind of fill in the floor here. And we'll go to color. And again, we'll kind of hit orangish yellow and just uh, try and find something that looks a little bit, a little bit warmer in our scene. Whoop. There we go. Now that's a bit. It's a bit much on that floor. It's kind of making it a little bit look a little bit green. Uh, 
trying to find it slightly warmer. There we go. That's looking a bit better. My BD intensity is a bit high. Whoops. <laughs> yes, intensity can vary quite dramatically, quite quickly. But you're starting to see how uh, how we can fill a room with lights in various different ways. Ain't that lovely? So, what shall we cover next when it comes to lights? I think the obvious thing would be kind of making them make sense. It's not, you know, let me show you. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to build the scene. I'm going to walk around. And you're going to see that there's light, but there's no way to infer what it, where it's coming from. You can't see these uh, representations of lights once you're in there. How am I sounding, uh, everyone? Everything sounding good? Let me know if I need to speak up. It's very quiet in the office today. Try not to shout. Okay, so we're going to come in here, and you can see we've got our spotlight shining down, and then you look up and there's uh, no... Where's that light coming from? So, you know, this is, this is fine. Um, and it's pretty good if you want to do something a little bit, a little bit surreal where it doesn't seem to know where the light's coming from. But we come in here and we're like, okay, well, there's a lot of light, but where is it, where is it coming from? Where's it coming from, guys? So, let's go back to the store. And let's look up lights. Hey, so we search for the word lights. We're going to get a bunch of different things. Uh, but if we go all categories, maybe, f oh wait, yeah, furnishings works. There's also lighting. <laughs> people, people don't, yeah, those uh, categories can be debatable. <laughs> but you see we've got some lamps here, we've got some hanging oil lamps, um, some standing lamps. Ooh, this one's cool, this modern light design. It's like this wall thing. I've been meaning to get that and put that in my cyberpunk apartment, it looks pretty sweet. So let's go back up to the top here. Instead of sorting by relevance, we'll sort from price to low to high. And we can find some free options like this. Uh, this candle. That's pretty nice. Got a cute little candle. So let me let me just log in. Did I actually change? I did. Okay, check in OBS. Do, do, do. Logging in to my sensor account with my password that I'm not going to show on Twitch. Cool. We're back. So you see when something's free, instead of uh, saying like purchase or get sands or dollars, it just says get. So I'm gonna, just gonna get it. And just like that, it will appear in my inventory. So I go back to, from system to purchased. And you see we have candle here right away. So now I can click and drag this out. And we're gonna have, wow, that's a big candle. <laughs> Let's let's go to scale. Go zero point five to make it fifty percent smaller. So that's still pretty big compared to the avatar. But now I can do something like taking this light, kind of putting it on top, <laughs> and uh, turning down the intensity a little bit, making it much more, much more golden. Uh, maybe a bit more orange. Yeah, something like that. And now, now we have a, a sense of where that light is coming from. So if you don't want to see the representations of where the lights are, we can go to visibility and we can go to lights and toggle that off. And now you're getting a sense of what it's going to look like in the scene. So there's a candle and the light is emanating from the candle in a way that makes sense to our human minds. Terrific. Terrific. So we can turn that back on. We're already halfway through the stream, so let's move on to audio. Audio is kind of similar, I feel like. We're going to go to our inventory, we're going to go back to system, and we're going to grab a audio emitter. And you can see we have this cone, again, kind of like our spotlight, that's going to uh, emit sounds, basically. So we're going to put that above here, above the door, and we're going to turn it to point at the light. And over here in the properties window that it's already opened, you can see uh, I have a slider for inventory or stream. So streams, like I said, we're going to get to. For now, let's look at inventory. This is going to have the sounds that I've imported to Sansa or bought. So one thing we didn't talk about was, hey, 
if you don't want to buy lights or houses, you can import them. Up here, top left, import. Import free models, audios, scripts, and skyboxes. So if you have some uh, music or sound effects you want to use, you just go import audio, and we support pretty much every file type imaginable. But I've already got some music in my inventory. I'm going to use the music that I was playing at the beginning of my stream. And uh, that's going to play out of that speaker. So let's increase the loudness just to make sure we can hear it. And let's build that scene. Now by default, it's just going to start playing as soon as the scene loads. And it sh should, uh, should, just, uh, should play it once all the way through. So we'll start the track, and this is like a three minute track I gave it, so it's going to spend three minutes playing it. So we're going to hop in. We're going to run upstairs, so we get a little bit closer, and we... You know, we never lit the stairs, this is incredibly dangerous. And now, you should be able to hear as well, we have our music coming in, emanating from seemingly nowhere, looking at this mystical, mystical candle. Terrific! So sound can be that simple. Another option is to uh, look at different shapes of the sound. So again, you know, we've got point lights and spotlights. Um, we also have point sound as well as cuboid and sphere. So cuboid, well, why would you want a cube? Basically, a cube lets you do, you know, can put it in the middle of the room, and I've got some uh, the cuboid size. So if I do five by five, by five, it now kind of fills that that floor of the house. It kind of fills that space. Um, I'm going to move back so you can see a bit more clearly. So I can say, you know, okay, basically when you're inside the cube, uh, you're going to be hearing the music. Similarly, if I don't want a cube and I want a sphere, I can go to the emitter shape, I can go to sphere, and it's going to give me a, uh, a radius. And you can see it looks kind of similar to the point light, except it's made a different color. And if I change the sphere radius to something pretty big, um, you will hear the music as long as you're inside that sphere. So I'm going to crank this way. I'm going to do crank this down a little bit. So it's kind of on the outside house and on the inside. Actually, let's do a little bit less and I'll show you. I'll show you something neat. Come on. Yeah, uh, actually, I don't need to be moving across. Let's just move it down to uh, size, whoops, 7.5, cool. Let me show you <laughs> one more thing. If I select an object and go to properties, uh, there's a bunch of other options down here, and one of them is audio material. So if I set it to uh, concrete, when my avatar runs along it, it will make the sound of running on concrete. If I set it to wood, when my avatar runs along it, it will make it sound like I'm walking on, on wood. There's quite a few uh, good options here, like water, water shallow, mud, grass, glass, rock, sand. But there's also silent blocking and silent non-blocking. So if I select silent blocking, the walls of this house will now block sound from an emitter like this. So that's why I was thinking, uh, messing around with the size of this. You're now going to notice when we go into the stairwell, the music's going to stop. But you should be able to hear it from anywhere inside that sphere. So we're going to visit now. And feel free to, uh, you know, not get hung up on perfecting your house and getting the bed in the right position and getting the lights and whatever you want to build. Feel free to just um, use uh, use a default experience like this to mess around with lights and, and audio and figure out what it looks for you. So you can hear the music when we're in here because we're inside the sphere. And then we're out here and you can hear the music stops because that that wall and every other wall in this building now blocks sound. But you can faintly hear it through a doorway, through a hole. And then we come back here and you can hear it again very clearly. Pretty great, huh? I love this track. <laughs> That's why it's at the opening of my stream. Cool, cool beans. All right, so again, let's go to visibility. <laughs> and uh, so like I mentioned, you can get rid of the lights if you don't want to see them. You can also go to all the volumes and make them disappear that way. Same with lights and now 
Now they're still there when we select them, but they're not going to get uh, interfere with us while we're trying to select stuff. Uh, so let's let's put on a big TV screen. Let me show you how to do media streams. So I'm going to go to purchased, and I'm going to look for an objects that is a media screen. So I'm going to click and drag it out here. I'm going to have a big, great big TV screen here. Now this object you can only see from one side. That was just the way it's made. Next stream I'll show you how to fix stuff like that. But for now we're just going to just going to rotate this around. That was about 90 degrees, but it wasn't quite. So I'm going to go into properties, hit 90. There we go. So we know it's a media service because it has this default image of this three and the little uh, little countdown thing. Going back to the store, I can search for media surface, if I can spell. And you'll see I'll get a bunch of them. So there's the media sphere, a media dome, a curved one. Uh, this is the one I just used, but there's also ones where it's inside a TV, inside an arcade machine, um, where it's a dome, where it's on a PC monitor, all this kind of wonderful options. So let me uh, come back into Sansa. I'm going to show you a few more. I'll go back to my inventory. On the purchase, I'll search TV because I also have a couple of TVs here. There we go. There's one there. I'm going to make that a bit bigger so you can see that more clearly. And you can see this one actually has like a little bit of a, a frame around it. It's supposed to be a wall mounted TV. And uh, what? I'm going to go to my inventory here. going to delete my search, hit enter, because not long ago I bought a new TV. And why didn't it show up when I typed TV? What's it called? Television. It's called television. I'm going to drag that out, and uh, we're going to move that, move that back here, rotate it, and we're going to make that as big as we can. And you can see this is like a retro, retro TV look. Awesome. So how do we put YouTube or this Twitch stream on these screens? Well, to do that, we're going to need to go to Scene Settings. Now, I know the, I've seen people struggle with this before. They click the object. It's a media surface. Ah, how do I change it? Well, it's actually in Scene Settings. So Tools, Scene Settings, and we're going to scroll all the way down to Audio Streams and Media Surfaces. So again, this is where, going back to our audio emitter, uh, opening the properties menu, going to bring that over to compare. We have inventory and stream. So right now this is playing something from our, um, our inventory and music we've uploaded or bought. But if I switch it to stream, it will do one of these four audio streams or our media stream. So I'm going to set it to media stream. And even though I can't see the emitter, I know where its center is, so I'm just going to drag it out here. Here, let me flick that up on the screen for you. There we go. We'll make that a little bit bigger, make it more like a, a 10. So you'll be able to hear the media streams that we are putting on these surfaces if you're inside the sphere. So close that, close that, bonk. We're looking at scene settings. First thing we want to do is we want to... Um, Probably improve the quality of the stream. Actually, that's not exactly what we want. We want height 1080 probably and width. Select all that. 1920. There we go. That's probably what a video should look like. Terrific. So now we need a URL. Hey, do you remember when I accidentally had the wrong web page up? It's because it was this one. So if we get a help and you look at media services, you'll find the guides on how to do this. So there's instructions for YouTube, and then there's instruction for web audio streams, like web radio. And there's also instructions for Twitch. So let's take this, and we will copy and paste it into, into Sansar. So I'll do that, come back in, and on the media stream URL, we're going to paste it in there. I'm just going to double check. Yeah, I did alt tab. Great. So see, we've got this great big channel ID here. That's not that's that's not correct. We're gonna have to replace that with the channel ID. So the ID for our channel is Sansar official. So let's let's take a look at this. What's going on? It can be kind of confusing. 
if you've never done this kind of stuff before, but this is just the web URL with certain formatting to make it work for us. So it's HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, and then instead of www.twitch.tv, uh, it's player.twitch.tv. And then we have a question mark to request channel, and that channel will equal sans our official. Um, but this could be anyone like Day9 TV, Ninja Gaming, um, is that actually the URL? Not sure. Uh, <laughs> any any Twitch stream you want, you know, Beyond the Summit, whatever. And then after that, we have and to make it play uh, HTML5 video. That's just type of web video. It's the good one. Uh, and then we have and volume equal one, so it's not silent. Um, and then we probably, we might need some other ones like full screen and controls, but right now we're probably not going to worry about that. Now this is a cool thing. This is my favorite part. We go to options, we go to audio and web preview, and we click this and I'll try to load it up. So you see it was white for a second and then there I am. But unfortunately it's going to play an ad because it's Twitch. <laughs> uh, so we're going to wait for the ad to pass and then you will see me. Just kidding. We're not going to stop. Come on. No, what's, what's, the, what's the legal things of accidentally promoting Reese's Pieces? <laughs> Cool, so there we are. There's the Twitch stream of me doing this with that slight delay that Twitch has. So that's why you're seeing what I was just doing a second ago. And then you're now seeing the screen of that and it's gonna keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. <laughs> Look at all my faces. Look, it's me. It's me on so many screens and so many places and so many times. <laughs> so that's that's how to do a live Twitch stream. It is that easy. So I'm gonna turn the audio preview off and we're going to kind of bring this together now in the watchroom template. So let's uh, do a quick recap. Let's clear some windows we don't need here. Uh, if we go to our inventory and we go to system, we have point lights and spotlights to help illuminate our scene. And then uh, we can also change their intensity, brightness, range, color, all that kind of stuff. Drag them around where we like. We can buy items off the store or import our own models so that they have uh, some reference in the real world. And then if we also want sound, we've got audio emitters that we can have as a cone or we can have as a as a sphere like this one. And uh, we can set the properties in there to be a media stream or audio music that we've already uploaded. And then if we have uh, surfaces that are designed to show media, we can go to tools scene settings and add that at the bottom here. Now you may have noticed that even though we had free screens it was duplicated everywhere. So that's something to consider. If you have a media surface and you're pulling in a stream it will play the same one on every single media surface. It's just like what is media surface tell me and scene settings is going it's this one so it's gonna play it across all the screens. Cool. Let's go back to my experiences. Let's create another one and we'll call it a uh, Elliot's stream lounge, lounge, lounge. That's how you spell lounge, right? Uh, 2.0. And we're gonna go starting complete, and in, we're gonna look at watch party night or day. Let's do night. And we're gonna create. It's gonna appear here, and we're gonna click edit scene, and we're gonna discard save changes. Well, <laughs> discard changes without saving. Cool. Now I'm in a totally different experience. Whoa, what is going on here? Here we have a template. And this template is going to show a lot of what I've talked about today. So we have this white room. Oh, hold on, let me close some of these windows. We have this white room gallery kind of thing. And you see when I selected it, it's here down in scene objects. And let's take stock of what we've got going on in here. Um, after I select something else, all the walls on blue. <laughs> so there's our familiar spawn point, little green dot. That's where we're going to appear. And then here we have uh, a spotlight and another two over here, kind of orbs of light. On plus, they have this spotlight at the bottom of them that's very flanged and open. Uh, so it's shooting out light in a cone as well as radially. Um, so you can yeah put lights on top of each other for different effects. And then over here you can see we've got some spotlights on this tree. And we've got several uh, spotlights coming from the ceiling up here. Excuse me. 
And then right in front of us, what's going on here? Well, we've got our media surface uh, audio emitter. And if I turn that off on the visibility, you can see behind it, we've got our media surface screen. So let's go into scene settings, scroll down. And uh, so we've got a uh, YouTube video already in here. And we've already set had the width and height set to 1080p. So let's put in a YouTube video and look at that analysis. Anyone on Twitch chat want to just like call out a song or a favorite video thing? What I might do, uh, I might play it safe. Who have we partnered with? Actually, uh, we could do a bit of K-pop maybe. <laughs> uh, tell you what, let's just do the uh, Ready Player One trailer. Is that because we did a partnership with them? Is that all right? Let's do music. If I won't mind. Let's go a uh, new retro wave. And here I will bring you over to what I'm looking at: new retro wave radio photos, retro wave beats, and uh, that's an advert. We don't want that. Yeah, Mega Drive and the program is pretty good. So shout out to new retro wave radio and uh, Mega Drive. Go like, share, and subscribe. Buy their albums. Oh, that covers me, right? <laughs> cool. Oh, wait, I didn't actually get what I needed. Uh, Alt Shift 2. There we go. You're back. So, we've got a video. Uh, we don't want, like, the full URL. Even though that's what you usually do when you share. You see, we've got watch. Question mark. Ah, question mark. Equals. Ooh, this is looking familiar. And then we have a... A kind of a code. So that's the video, the YouTube video's actual name, its actual ID. So I can copy and paste it from URL up here, but I can show you another way to find it. If I go to share, um, you see it gives me a YouTube link that's shortened, and I just want this bit after the slash. Control C. Come back into Sanzar, and you can see here we have a media stream URL. So it's HTTPS, YouTube, slash embed. And then this is the ID after the slash after the embed. So we're going to replace that. And then it's a question. So it's autoplay equals one. So it's going to start playing from the beginning. It's going to loop is equal to one. So that means it's true. So it's going to loop the video. And uh, this playlist is not always necessary. Um, but sometimes it's happier if you have it as a playlist of one. So uh, that's the second place the YouTube ID will appear. And that's the second place we'll put it in this URL. So here after the slash embed and here after playlist equals and then finally uh, we need allow full screen equals ones and also uh, controls equals zero so that means it's false that means it's not going to show the player bar and the the controls because you can't click those while you're in sansa cool so now if i go audio video preview you see it's going to start playing that music. And you see if I move away from the audio emitter, it's going to get quieter. Uh, because that audio emitter that we had is a sphere, so it's kind of radial. So it's going to get louder the closer I get to the sphere, and it's going to be loudest when I'm inside it. And you see it's playing the music video there as well. So I'm going to go back to options and turn off that preview. Cool, cool beans. And again... Uh, Coming back to the web, you can find everything you need to know about um, what type of URL shenanigans you need to pull um, here on using and previewing media streams on uh, help.sansar.com. Just uh, search media streams or media services and you'll find what you need. And uh, yeah, it's really just about formatting the URL correctly. Uh, so if you have any problems, there's probably just something went wrong there. Cool. All right. <laughs> Harley's bringing up Badger Badger Mushroom. Thanks for getting that stuck in my head again. Cool. All right. Let's let's uh, do a little customization in here. Let's. I kind of like the trees on this. Uh, sorry, the lights on this tree. But I do feel like it's pretty dark in here. So let's make these table lights. I'm gonna select all of them. I'm gonna go to Tools Properties window. It was closed before, so I'm gonna go and reopen it by going to Scene Settings. Sorry, not Scene Settings. Tools Properties. 
So this is a fun thing, new addition. Uh, we can select multiple objects like lights and change the intensity for all of them. And we can also change the color for all of them. So this is going to be I'm going to be bring out the, the retro wave music. So let's make a little bit of the purple. Now I'm selecting the spotlights uh, instead of the point lights. And again, uh, we'll make them kind of pinky purple. And we'll crank up the intensity. Crank up. Oh yeah, sorry, accept. Crank up the intensity. There we go. It's getting brighter in here, getting easy to see. Let's select all the, oops, all these lights along here. I'm just shift clicking, sorry. Again, doing things, not saying. Shift click, shift left, shift left click. Sh yeah, shift left click. I can also actually just do it inside here. <laughs> this is probably easier. I'm just gonna select these uh, spotlights I may have started. Hmm. Okay, I don't know which ones I'm selecting now. Let's start that again. Because <laughs> there are other spotlights in the scene. So, uh, we're going to do it by look. So that we're not selecting the ones on the table here or on the tray. Just going to select these ones up here. And then we're going to go to color. And we're going to go for that retro wave chic. And make it more like a cyan. Uh, let me make that greener. Oh, too green. There we go. And we can crank up that intensity by dragging it. Or we can just... Hit a higher number. Cool. Yeah. There we go. So now we've got a lot more color and light going on here. And uh you know, let's uh let's move one of these tables back. Whoops. Select all the objects it's made of, the two lights and the table. We'll drag that back over there. And in the center here, let's make it a little bit cozy. We'll go to our inventory. We'll go to purchased. We'll go to bed. And uh We'll put a bed on the floor here. Boom. Drag that down a little bit so it's on the floor. Or you can see where it's clipping uh, through the object there. So we'll do that. We have a TV. Sorry, not a TV. A television at the foot of our bed as well. I'm drag that there. I'm going to move that down a little bit. And actually what I can do is I can go up to options and I can go to surface snap. And when I click and select something, you'll see it'll drag on the floor instead of me having the gizmo. So now it's definitely on that floor. Uh, I can actually do the same for the bed, but we're good on the bed. So they're actually on the floor. There's not like a little bit left over. I'm just going to untoggle surface snap and now we get the gizmo back. Cool. And then let's... um, Let's take this media surface and its loudness is 80. Let's turn that down to like 25 so that I can show you another another audio emitter. I'm going to go to system. Don't see anything. Why don't I see anything? Because I had a search up. I'm going to delete that, hit enter, drag out an audio emitter, flip that round, and uh, kind of put that in the TV so it's kind of emanating from the TV. So this is directional, like the sphere is going to be in an orb, but this is going to come boom out here like a speed box <laughs> speed box boop, boop. speed box whatever <laughs> noises <laughs> gonna go into the property windows for the object here and we're gonna crown this loudness out to 80 so we can hear the difference because uh, we like sleeping to really loud retro wave music apparently cool so we're gonna hit build we're gonna save and continue and so now we've taken the watchroom template we've added some flair for our own color um, We've given it its own media stream, so that's the YouTube one. Um, and I showed you before how to use a Twitch stream. If it's live, you just need the the um, the username of the Twitch uh, Twitch streamer. And if you want to do it with a uh, Twitch VOD, you just use the video ID for for that in the URL. Again, all the details can be found there. I'm not showing in sounds there anymore. Oh no! Sorry guys. <laughs> Sorry chat. <laughs> Look. Look, it's fine. I'm s I'm sorry guys. The Switch chat wound up behind OBS, so I didn't see it. <laughs> but now you get to see the finished thing. <laughs> okay. Let me show you what I was doing. Sorry, chat. 
Sorry, everyone watching. Okay, so we selected all the lights and uh, we changed them to a different color. We selected all the lights on the table here, made them more purple, and we uh, put an audio emitter here and we uh, turned that up. And we actually did not do something correctly. So this one is the uh, sound source is set from inventory to stream. This one is still set to inventory, it's set to none. So it did not pick up the media stream. So I'm going to go flip over to stream, and now it's uh, now it's the media stream coming through. So thanks for pointing out that I was showing you the wrong screen. We're coming back in now. How much did I miss? How long? How long was I was I on the wrong screen? <laughs> Oops. Sorry. About two minutes. Oh god. I lost you about two minutes. <laughs> Sorry guys. Wrapping up the end of the stream. Got a little bit a little bit trying to trying to hit everything I want to show you by by the end of the hour. But hey, it made chat more active. <laughs> okay, wow, look at that little TV. It's making so much noise. Because that's set to the media stream. It's set to 80. Got our bed here. Got our purple lights, sort of blue lights. Let me come over here. And uh, it's actually too quiet to hear the difference in the speakers, but we've got another one over here. But that's all there is to it. To make your own. To mess with lights. And uh, mess with media streams. So, let's do a recap. In your inventory on the system, you've got point lights and spotlights. Point lights are these spherical ones here. And then uh, spotlights are kind of spotlighty, as you can see. Uh, kind of come in a cone. Uh, we can change a light's intensity and color, as well as their range. And with the spotlights, we can change the, change the angle. Uh, then we also can change the color, and we can change the color for multiple objects at once. So I have to select all of these, go this, I think this is one of the main things you missed. can make that darker purple. Cool. And then we also, on the, on the system, we have the audio emitters. An audio emitter can be a point, a sphere, or a cube. And that will change the, the directionality of the, the directionality of the sound. Sorry, excuse me. Shouldn't have drunk water midstream. <laughs> um, so audio emitters can be spheres, cones, and cubes, and that will change the directionality of the sound. And then in the properties, we just set wherever we want it to be playing something from our inventory that we've imported or bought, or we can change it to be one of our audio streams or our media streams. And uh, again, we can change the, the loudness of them. And then if we go to scene settings and scroll down to the bottom, that's where we'll find our audio and uh, media streams. We'll call this Retrowave. And uh, yeah, just, <laughs> I dare I go, dare I go back to the web and show you this again. You must hate it by now. <laughs> so if you look at the web page, we'll have um, information on whether you're trying to do it with a YouTube URL, a Twitch live stream, a Twitch VOD, all that information is is up there, and uh, yeah, you just copy and paste it in, and then cr put in the the YouTube video ID, the uh, Twitch streamer ID, or you're putting in the Twitch VOD uh, number, again, kind of video ID. And uh, if you're having uh, trouble uh, previewing it, remember uh, we can do things. We can go into visibility, turn off the audio volume, so we can see the screen. Then we can go into options, and we can do web web preview and see that it's working. Great. And uh, so if they're having any problems with that, it's probably because uh, probably because something went wrong in the in the URL under under scene settings. And if you're really having trouble, join our Discord and ask a question. Someone will probably know the answer. I definitely will because I like doing a lot with video streams. 